Hey everybody, this is Joel Daniela. and Paul from Moving to Mexico. Bienvenidos a nuestro canal. Bienvenidos a Guanajuato, the town and the state. And bienvenidos to another episode of Behind the Mexican Door. And we're in a very special place today. Um, I had this, it's a Canadian connection. Oh, yeah. Uh, back in the day when I used to have open houses, because I'm a developer from Canada, uh -huh. we would uh, celebrate a completion of a project. So mm -hmm. we would do an open house there and invite all of, our, all of our friends, family, and client list. Susan used to run a catering firm, and she was a chef, and would always do our catering. And then one day, she uh, kind of moved to Mexico with her husband, Andre, and I've been kind of keeping in touch every now and then. And when we came on this trip, I'm like, I think I know someone from Canada who actually has a little hotel in Guanajuato. So I, I reached out to Susan and we kind of put the connection back together and here we are. They've invited yeah. us to spend the night. That's so nice. She's not here, she's in Canada. Mm -hmm. But her husband Andre uh, is here. Hola. Hey, Andre. I'm Andre. Joel. Joel, Danny. Pleased, to, Danny, pleased to meet you. But our car is uh, kind of parked where we shouldn't be. And I think you have a garage. Yes. Okay. We can uh, if you go down the road. Yeah. About. 500 meters, there's yeah. an OXO on the right, then there's a Returno, you come back, and the parking is on this property, but it's below us. Okay. Oh. Full level. So, all right. What's this tunnel? <laughs> oh, that's cool. One of the tricky things here is, how do you finish the top of the tunnel, because this is an open cut. Right. Probably heard of subways yeah. that have open cuts, right? And then they just put in flat concrete, they pour it and everything's kosher. Well, that doesn't really fit with the vocabulary of the city because the city is all made of tunnels. So I came up with an idea to put in a steel cage work here yeah. out of rebar, and then I put chain link fence on it. Then I took the stones that we took out of the wall we put it on top, added mortar yeah. and concrete, and then I moved that framework, I removed it, and we moved it up, and we repeated okay. the process, and we, we moved it up again. It's the first time I've seen anyone use that trick. You know, how sharp these edges are, how perfectly you put them in place. Like, this is not a person who started doing this on his no. coffee break. You know, he's very precise. Beautiful work. And also, you can see, even these pieces here, which are not, this is not really a high quality stone. It came from this site. But look at this wall. Yeah. So to retain all the soil on the other side, this wall is five and a half feet thick at the bottom because you need to have enough mass right. to retain the forces of the soil. Because up there is where the, the soil was originally in the stone. So there's a lot of earth moving that, that took place here. So everything that you're seeing here is basically was was stone. We brought in a couple hundred truckloads of soil so that we could get some growth in the plants happening. Of course, that's a problem because you're importing bacteria and viruses from other parts uh, that they're not, it's not naturalized right. here. So it takes time for all that to settle out. But I got the soil from over there in Mayado. There's a guy who has a, uh, keeps about a hundred head of ca cattle yeah. and he's got a piece of land that's got a flat spot and the rains come and they bring the topsoil down and that's where he has the cows uh, doing their thing shall we say right. eating and the other end of the equation and so you have this extremely uh, rich and potent rich, soil rich yeah. and potent soil yeah. Uh, the problem I had was I mixed it with some regular soil, but I should have mixed it with more soil. Mm. So we had a couple of years trying to manage viruses and bacteria from that soil and get it all balanced out. I think we're pretty close now. Um, everything is starting to calm down. We, we have two gardeners and actually they're here today. Um, and we have a, an agronomist and he helps manage all the vac uh, viruses bacteria, all the little animals. He brings in spiders, sets them up. He brings them in. He brings them in yeah. because, you know, there's a natural system that has to take place. Th this site was stone, and I, I don't want to get into the nuances of everything that happened on this site before we got here, but let's just say it was an activity center for youth. Right. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> 
Do worms play a big part in that and keep getting the they soil do. and the bacteria? There's actually a really neat chap here in the city. His name is Kenny. He kind of calls himself the worm doctor. And he specializes in red wigglers. And so he brought some of those worms here. That got our compost going. And so um, we've got them hanging around in the compost pile. And, you know, he's advised us on how to keep them happy. But we've got lots of worms. Cool. And, uh, you know, the chickens also love to hang around with those. And For sure. Deal with that. So, so what, is, what is this area here that we're we in? We call this the plaza. So this is uh, a public area. Uh, we call it a common area for our guests and they can come here and party and they can smoke here uh, of course in Mexico you want to have shade right. so we got a little bit of shade there in the morning if they want to come up for coffee then this spot is in shade yes. so development of properties in Mexico you really have to think about shade you know in northern climates you think about how do we capture the sun right. here it's it's the opposite it's the opposite, it's the opposite. so uh, that's a an important element that we yeah try to keep and then you, uh, you look have at the beautiful view. garden here like the wall <laughs> yeah. and then I can see another garden spot there should we yes. go there yeah sure let's go so I know people think that cactuses will just survive without water which is true but if you want them to flourish like this one here this cactus was a baby we're talking a couple of inches high uh, I'm gonna say two and a half years ago but we water it. One of our biggest costs here is watering. And we have a, a, a 76,000 liter uh, cisterns over here that help us manage that. But we're just in the planning stages of tripling that capacity so that we can keep uh, up on the watering and make sure everything looks Are you still vibrant. getting the same rainy season as they do like in Mexico City? Or is it slightly different here? Uh, it can vary quite a bit. Uh, we can have a situation where the rains start already in April. Right. May, you can have torrential downpours of, yeah. you know, this much per hour. Uh, this year, it didn't start till July, uh, but we've had a good uh, rainy season, and our cisterns are overflowing. So, so you're collecting rainwater as well. We are. Okay. We are. Um, in Mexico, it doesn't seem to be a big issue, as you may know. That in certain parts of the world, it's very strictly considered to be a resource that is owned by the crown or by the by the government and they don't look uh, very highly on you even if you have just a rain barrel obviously we have a very significant series of rain barrels here so they own the rain yeah they, they do because it's it's a natural resource right. it's, it's no different than say oil in the ground or coal um, but in Mexico I think people would have a uh, the authorities would have a tough time stopping someone from collecting some rain Wait, before we move on, yeah. what is this here? Oh, yeah. That's that's the workshop. I don't know if you want to come yeah. in. Yeah, let's look. check it out. Let's check it out. Um, it's the wood workshop. So this is the wood workshop. This is the wood workshop, yeah. So I cut my own trees here. I look out and I find mm -hmm. uh, dead tropical trees. I cut this in March of 2020. Um, and why the aging? So the, the wood has to dry out? Yes. Okay. And you can see even at this moment I've got these clamps on to keep it from going all over the place. Yeah. The most important thing in, in drying wood is patience. If you don't have patience, don't try to do this. It's like many things in life. Beer, wine, <laughs> like... Women? <you> can't <laughs> mezcal, tequila. Mezcal, tequila, yeah. etc. So and you get wood from all over Mexico shipped here? No, not usually. Okay. Uh, these these trunks and these slabs, the tree tree, I cut them locally. Oh, okay. I go down these little roads and I start searching for them. Yeah. And when I see the bark falling off and there's no leaves, then that's a pretty good indicator to me. I want to go and try to find the owner, negotiate. I mean, usually you start with something, someone called the velador, which is the watchman, because let's just say that farm crops here can get very dynamic. They can disappear overnight unless you have a velador. So there's usually, that's your first gatekeeper. You gotta talk to him, win him over. Usually a cold beer helps, something like that. You can spot the horse. Can you spot the horse head there? There's his eye, there's, there's, the, there's the, the nose, the snout of the, the horse. So I thought, oh wow, you know, cause how do we deal with the legs for the sideboard? They could be something boring. So what we're trying with this one is I'm gonna set it up 
with the horse look for the client. And I said to them, if they don't like the horse look, we can just chop the horse's nose off and we can go to a rectangular, right. more of a bar, more, bar. more of a cow. <laughs> more, <laughs> more of a right. cow. Yeah. Oh, yeah that, that's real wood there. That's real walnut. Walnut. Oh, so what so is this these here? are mezcal presentation platters. Right. So I have a local lady. She makes the little cups for this, yeah. ceramic cups. Mm -hmm. Then the sal de gozano comes here yeah. and um, the fruit chilies fruit, yeah. Yeah. or whatever comes over here. And I, pre I make these in various exotic woods from Mexico. That is from the state of Guerrero. Okay. It's Bocote. 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 Uh, so it's heavy, like even this? Super. It's solid. Heavy. Yeah, very much. This, uh, I was very fortunate. I got this in Michoacan. It's okay. cherry. Mm -hmm. Cherry doesn't grow wow. very frequently in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But in Michoacan, there's some really big ones. And CFE, the, the Federal Electrical Authority, yeah. they were cutting down some cherry trees because they were in the way. They were creating these lines, these power lines. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be right there. And there was a guy who was like a couple hundred feet away from where they're putting in the lines. And he had a sawmill. So I said, hey, he calls himself Mickey Mouse. That's his oh. name, if you can imagine. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, that's what he calls himself. Anyways, uh, um, so I make a deal with him and I say, look, can I buy the, 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 the trunk? And then can you slice it? Oh, sure. So we figured it all out. But I was just in my little car, so we couldn't really, you know, it was just one of those mm -hmm. perchance things. Anyways, we sliced it in half and four of us managed to get half of the piece into the back of the... Uh, the little car, and so that's the, the history of this. Where that came from. That's where that one came awesome. from. Awesome. This is a tree that is completely prevalent in central Mexico. Okay. It grows everywhere. It is one of the most robust trees you can imagine. But here's the amazing thing. No one uses this tree for anything. It's completely perplexing, and it can grow huge. Normally, uh, this is called pirul. Uh, normally, this tree grows to about a 16-inch diameter. It's not that great in terms of woodworking by the time you lose your bark and you know you got round edges and everything but this one i found fell four years ago uh here in guanajuato city came down and it destroyed three cars in a giant wind mm -hmm. and it collapsed the cars and and it was giant it was uh, two meters in diameter. okay so we're talking a serious tree and it's over there the bottom there that's we sliced it in the other direction for coffee tables and so because that's three or four inches thick, it's three, three years for that to dry. And these are some leftover pieces. And it, it's quite uh, beautiful when you put a finish on it. Yeah, it's pretty It's got pretty. a nice color. Yeah, it's very it's rusty beautiful. Looking. We designed, or I designed this workshop with the view in mind. I wanted it to be inspired. I wanted it to be fantastic. The only real vegetation that we have here from the original let's call it the bald stone, yeah. is that garambuyo right there. And it's... That's the cactus. That's the cactus. But these other trees in here, they're all planted a couple of years ago. And they were just, uh, you know, less than a meter tall. They were, they were short. But we are not uh, very frugal when it comes to water. And of course, if you water it here in Mexico... It's growing. It's growing. It is... It, you get to the point where you don't want it to actually grow anymore, you're, you're managing the overgrowth. You're not trying to foster more growth. So what do you think, Joel? Pretty well blown away. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we pulled up to the property, it's, it's you know, from the other side, it's pretty unassuming. You're like, that's a pretty little place to maybe stay, but you don't, you don't see any of this. So then once you come through the property, I mean, it's, it's magical all along the way, yeah. you know, from, you know, where we ended up parking, coming through the tunnel, oh, that and that amazing. entire story. And then the garden here is, it's, it's well, increíble. Well kept. Yeah. So work. should we uh, make this a two-parter, Joel? Let's make this a two-parter. Yeah. Uh, well, number one, uh, <laughs> thanks for doing the tour so far. And do not touch that dial, as they used to say. You want to make sure you come to the second part of this video and see the rest of this, this incredible property. And as part of our why choose Mexico City uh, over Europe and as we're saying you kind of fly into Mexico City and then you create a whole itinerary around that trip and you make that your summer vacation uh, rather than going all the way across the pond there's so many more I think 
more interesting things in Mexico than you can actually find uh, over there. And uh, you gotta come stop in Guanajuato and stay at this uh, beautiful hotel. Thank you.